Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review. And, uh, for... On the next movie, movie review, I decided, I decided to, um... Review a tr uh, an animated trilogy um, based on a, on a TV show that I grew up with. Another childhood, uh, thing that I grew up watching. And that is The Rugrats. I grew up watching the TV show, um, always had a fun time watching it growing up. It's a, it's a classic Nickelodeon, uh, a classic Nickelodeon theme. And for the longest time, it was like the longest running uh, car uh, cartoon for Nickelodeon until Spongebob did though, but Rugrats was another, just another classic cartoon that a lot of people like myself grew up watching. And then until in, until in 1998, they came out with their first movie, the Rugrats movie, in 1998, released in 1998, and I remember I remember have uh, having a good time watching it. Then of course in 2000 they came out with the sequel, um, Rugrats in Paris, the movie, which. To me, that's my favorite of the trilogy. It's the best one of the trilogy. To me, it is. And then, 2003, they came out with uh, the uh, Rugrats, uh, the Rugrats Go Wild, which was the crossover, a crossover which they meet the Wild Thornberries. Um, but Rugrats in Paris, to me, was the best one in the trilogy. But I, but regardless, I still like the first, the first movie. I still do. And it came out, got mixed reviews when it came out, but it was successful at the box office overall. Made 140 million worldwide on its budget, of what of 20 of 20 some million, like 25, 24. And it has a 5.99 IMDb and a 59% of Rotten Tomatoes, so it was mixed. But it was successful overall, and and also I also remember um, with the first movie that I grew up also playing there was um, a CD-ROM game of the first movie which I always still I had always have fun playing with it's one of my favorite um, one with a few other CD games CD CD-ROM games that I I loved playing growing up so I still that's why I have the old one so I could play like my some of the old games I had but yeah the Rugrats uh, movie um, uh, CD -ROM, CD ROM game I I always enjoy having fun playing with that. Um, but um, in the first movie, it also introduces the it introduces uh, Tommy's little brother Dill, and how it how it opens up it um, it opens up like a like a parody with the parody of Indiana Jones. Um, they're trying to get this golden statue, which is supposed to be a symbol like from the Indiana Jones. <laughs> but it's but it's but it's another it's another make believe adventure that they do, and this time um, Tommy's mom Dee Dee is pregnant with with uh, which is which is Dill, and you know um, Angelica tells Tommy that uh, they're that 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 his that Tommy's parents are going to give more attention to to the new baby instead of him, and then the next day that she goes into labor they rush to the hospital. And she gives uh, birth to Dill, and they want to show Tommy his little baby brother. Um, of course, Dill just goes and rings his nose like this, and he he starts crying, and then starts and then Dill starts crying, and he's been crying like all continuously throughout, and. He's just wanting to grab all the attention because he's a cr being because he's crying so much. Um, and he just doesn't want he and he doesn't want to share anything, keep him like share any of toys with Tommy and this and that. And while that is going on, um, well, first things with first uh, Stu, his father his father uh, Stu tells him about responsibility, gives him like this locket with a picture of both of them. Of course. Of course, with their babies, you know, the whole, the whole the whole show, they always mispronounce words, so he calls it sponsatility. And also, at the same time, um, Stu has been working on a, on a new, uh, 
uh, on a new product um, that he built, and that's the Reptar Wagon. And has all these little gizmos, and he can even talk. It has a speaking voice in it. And actually, I, which I still find funny to this day, that the, the, the voice of the Reptar Wagon is voiced by Busta Rhymes, really enough. Yeah, Busta Rhymes. The, well, the, the other film that I remember him, he was in Halloween Resurrection. You know, you know, trick or treat, motherfucker. Or, hey, Mikey, happy fucking Halloween, and this and that. And yeah, kung, kung fu and Michael Myers and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, Buster Rhymes. I I just well back then I didn't know, but I just it's really enough today. I just still find it funny that Buster Rhymes is the voice of the rep, Reptar wagon. I am Reptar. Hear me roar. So, and and by this time, like uh, um, Tommy's friends, you know, Phil, Lil, Chucky, they think that um. They get they get they get an idea that they want to get to Tommy a new brother, so they want to go back to the hop. Well, I've, I've said with a hopsicle is what they say, but it's the hospital. So they just, they decided to uh, get in the Reptar wagon and drive to the hospital to give Tommy a new brother. <laughs> and and but Tommy doesn't want to. He just he but doesn't doesn't like that though. But Eventually, they get there in the reptile again. They start roaming, uh, roaming, th roaming into the streets, um, and then also a deal has taken uh, Cynthia, Cynthia, Angelica's favorite doll, and which when she when she notices that it's gone, she goes and takes uh, Spike to go find them. And one thing leads to another. The babies they crash into the woods, and. And while the baby, the babies are gone, the news is there. All the, all the news is there. Of course, you get this, ir, um, this, um, this douchebag reporter named Rex Pester, which that's what his last name is. He's a pest. He pests everybody. This dude, he's he, he's a, he's a douchebag reporter. He's also he's really he's voiced by Tim Curry. Really enough, this is Rex Pester. Big action news. <laughs> yeah. And he's he's just a straight up he's just a complete douchebag and he just cares he cares about getting his he 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 likes he cares doesn't care about the family drama like he doesn't care about he's like oh please tell me you'll never see your daughter again and this and that and I just thought I always thought that, I always thought the character I I I never I just never care for that character even though he had Tim Curry voice in the character but the character itself is just. And unlikable because he's a complete douchebag. He cares about his job. He doesn't care about the babies are missing. He just cares about, whoa, you know, he's a he's a he's a he's a pest. That's what he is. He's a pesterer. That's what he does. is pest everybody. So, and Stu gets an idea that to find to find the babies is he has another um he has a fly a flying machine um it was like another dinosaur like a spin uh, thing for reptile I forget what the uh. I forget what that thing is called though, what the name of it, uh, the kind of dinosaur was called though. So he gets the idea to use that to fly, you know, like to the way, the woods to, to look for the babies. Um, and one that leads to another is that um, um, while the while they're in the woods, uh. There, the, 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 there's also um, they get there's a. Well, at first they try to change uh, Dill's di diaper, and uh, the the uh, Chucky Phil and Lil are thinking that they care that Tommy cares more about his brother than his friends, and they're starting to start like uh, quite they're questioning him for that, and they get end up on a river, you know it's it's, a, it's also a, a flotation device as well, and all while that's going on, you got these two park rangers, one's voiced by Whoopi Goldberg and one by David Spade. And they think they see a dragon out there, and David Spade's uh, character is a complete wimp. Oh, this dragon! Oh, I'm a friend, but I'm such a fraidy cat. That's basically what his character is. Um, and and they're on the river, and like Chucky, he falls out, 
and when he gets back in, he thinks that Tommy still cares about more of his brother's safety than Chucky's. And all else going on, uh, uh, Angelica, he, she gets into the woods with uh, Spike, and Spike runs off without her. And all that, all that um, there is a wolf uh, roaming in the woods as well. You see a couple of t a couple times you see the wolf, and all that's going on. That they find a train that's in the woods, which is was which or from earlier it was run by these these two circus guys who had these. Basically, these out of control monkeys. They, for their stupidity, they said, they said, first of all, they said, "Oh, you stay here while I get coffee, and you watch the monkeys." No, you watch the monkeys, and I will get coffee. But apparently, their stupidity is that they they leave the train all alone with all these monkeys that are out of control, and they steal the train. And it derails into the forest thanks to their stupidity. So, um. But they so the babies they find the train the monkeys you know they get that they they start messing with the babies and they take dill and and uh, Quil, uh, uh, Phil Lil and, and Chucky they uh, said they don't they don't want nothing to do with Tommy no more because he cares more of his brother than he does with his friends so so Tommy decides to go off and find him on his own. And then the rest of them are to defend for themselves. And it's this time when it's pouring down. Uh, when it's nighttime, it's pouring down the rain. Um, Tommy finds Dill, and he still is. He still is unwilling to share, like the blanket or the bottle. And he gets knocked into. A, Tommy gets knocked into into some mud, and th Dill thinks it's funny. And he comes to the realization that what he does was a mistake. It was like. Oh, Phil, no, we're right, you know. I, I, I should have just gone to the hospital, but no, but I've got my responsibility. And I don't want my responsibility no more. So he throws the locket away. And I guess he was he was, he was going to let the monkeys take him again by putting a pouring of what? He's like the uh, the baby food on him, I guess. But then now Duel realizes that what he's doing with Dylan was wrong, so he feels sorry for his brother. So, so, then, so, they, so they both... Um, you know, feel sorry for each other, so they decide to hide in that uh, hollow tree. And by the next morning, the, the monkeys they're gonna they were gonna go after them, but they get rescued by uh, by the by the other babies. Which also far the thing that they wanted to seek out um, a wizard who they were wherever this place is at, which they call a lizard. <laughs> but they save Tommy in the reptile wagon. And as they're in the they're in the rip, um, well, the spike spike is there to help as well. And one thing that's another, Angelica finds them as well, and they get on the reptile wagon. They're on the wooden bridge, but the monkeys get scared off when the wolf comes, and Spike comes in to fight the wolf, and but then one thing that's another, they get both supposedly they fall off the bridge together. And they think that they, they all think that um, Spike is gone, and Stu is um, he's still he's still flying he's still flying through the air looking for the babies and uh, oh well at least another is that oh before that he's still flying there and he crashes into Rex Pexer's helicopter and he finds the babies and he crashes to um, the ranger station I guess and. Which the babies think uh, that he's the wizard or lizard or whatever, and he falls off because he says Tommy wishes that he wants to spike back because he thought they were to give him a wish instead instead of returning home. But he falls off, but Spike is still hung on the bridge still, and all the parents, you know, Dee Dee, uh, Grandpa Lou, Betty Howard, um, Chaz, um, Drew. Um, uh, what was uh, uh, Charlotte? That was Drew's, uh, Drew's, uh, Drew's wife, uh, Angelica's mother. They all find, they all find them. Um, they are all happy to be uh, to reunite with their babies again. Um, and of course, the rest Rex Pester, he's like all bandaged up or he has a black eye, or whatever. And then the monkeys, well, they find their circus. They, they find that they reunite with their circus owners, and they. Um, 
they, they, they go and start, like, pestering Rex Pester. And, yeah, it is for far, far to change the things. I thought I'd just drink uh, the bottle of Coke, you know, for a change of things. So, um, and then the, as the as as the film ends, you know, doing their Indiana Jones uh, parody, and this time they get the thing, which is actually in real life. It's a ice cream sundae they wanted to get from the fridge. And that's and that's pretty much it. And just yeah, that's the end of the movie. So yeah, the the first the first Rugrats movie, I I like though. But on the next review, I get to my favorite of the trilogy, Rugrats in Paris. So yeah, it's, it's not it's not that long of a review because it's the, it's the Rugrats movie. It's not much to review about. But I st I still like I still like the the movie. Um. I would give it a thumbs up because you know, in the retrospect, because I grew I grew up with the Rugrats. I still enjoy the show. I have all the seasons over over there, of of the Rugrats. It's it's still it's still a, it's still a classic to me because the, because the show itself is a classic uh, Nickelodeon show. You know, and the, you know the Nickelodeon shows of today, none of them compare to the Rugrats. And I would say even SpongeBob because SpongeBob pre pre premiered in the late '90s, so I can still get that feel, that '90s feel while I'm still watching SpongeBob. So, but definitely the Rugrats is definitely another feel to it. So, but I still enjoy the Rugrats movie. I still, I, I always enjoy the character of the characters, the voice, the, the original voice actors of the show of the babies, whatever. Still, we're good, so we're still. Good at the time. Um, I like the special, uh, like the guest voices, like Whoopi Goldberg, uh, David Spade, Tim Curry. Yeah, even though Tim, yeah, uh, but Tim Curry was fine with his voice though, because like, always he has like has a good voice for, because he does a lot of voice work. So, but his the character Rex Pester I never cared for, because he's because he's a complete douchebag. But um, and, and it's still funny about uh, about Buster Rhymes' voice as the Reptar Wagon. I still find that funny. Of course, when you compare when you uh, compare when you saw him, see him in, Re in Halloween Resurrection. So, but yeah, the the, the whole voice cast still is still, still is good. But um, yeah, and like I said, I, I still I still enjoy playing the 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 CD ROM game of the movie. I still do. It's always another a classic, a childhood uh, one of those. Uh, CD-ROM games I used to play, uh, still, uh, actually I still do, so, why not? It's still a childhood game for me. It's one of the best CD-ROM games, at least to me. But, um, the Rugrats the movie, it's still, it's still an enjoyable, classic, um, 90s, late 90s movie. The show, the show was, the show is still classic, and so, and so I will put it as this as well, because I remember seeing this growing up as well. So yeah, that's my that's my thoughts on the Rugrats movie. Um, then, but then on the next on the next review is getting to my favorite of the trilogy, which is the Rugrats in Paris, the movie. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned on the next uh, on the on my review for the sequel. And we'll see uh, see you see you on the on the next review.